This episode is called Evox's Revenge. We finally see where the Blaze and Roxy avatars were transported to after their fight with the Rangers, and that is none other than the Cyber Dimension where they encountered Scruzzle and his Tronics. And that was when Evox showed up to make it known that he wants to escape the Cyber Dimension at all costs. Roxy then mentions the Morphex, and Scruzzle explains that even though they don't have enough to transfer Evox back to where he came from, the amount that Roxy stole is enough to move robots and avatars so they can get more of it for themselves. And in the Grid Battle Force headquarters, Devon, Zoe, and Ravi have a successful training session in the battle simulator, and Ravi is confident that he will be chosen as the team's leader since he has the most experience, but Zoe on the other hand feels that she deserves it more because of how reliable she is at doing laundry. Ravi of course doesn't take her seriously, but Commander Shaw, who is also his mom, reminds him that he has never done laundry in his life. Ouch. We also see the Rangers' beast bots. Jax, who is fast, but hates being called cute. Smash, who enjoys hugs and is very strong. And Cruz, who can transform into a motorcycle. Nice. Betty and Ben then show up to share their newest invention, the Zappomatic. And even though it worked, they both end up zapping themselves and completely messing up their hair. That, my friends, is good quality comic relief, featuring them only when necessary. And back in the Cyber Dimension, Scruzzle, Scruzzle, or however you say his name, explains how he's been hiding from a robot called Vargoyle, and that the reason he built so many Tronics was to protect himself. I don't know who Vargoyle is, but I think it's safe to assume that he is bad news. Scruzzle then gives Blaze a modified Morphex key that he can use to teleport, and they both make their way to Earth's Dimension. You heard that right. Blaze, just like the Rangers, has a Morphex key and a modified Morpher. That is both crazy and awesome. Roxy got one too, but she stayed behind. We then cut back to Grid Battle Force, and Commander Shaw introduces the Rangers to their Zords and explains how the Beast Bots will be their control consoles. Betty and Ben then tells the Rangers about how there's been a security breach. They find Scrozzle, Blaze, and a group of Tronics, and they fight them off the best they can. Ravi and Zoe kept going back and forth about who the best leader is, but luckily Devin was there to keep them focused on the task at hand. And while this was going on, Scruzzle pulls out another corrupted key, which he charges with the Morphex, and he used it to create a Robotron monster called Cyclotron out of three tires. I think Evox means business. The Rangers then morph up, Scruzzle and Blaze retreat with the Morphex, and the Rangers use their abilities and new weapons to fight off the Tronics and Cyclotron. A random dog then runs by, causing Devin to freeze, and Ben comes to the rescue with his Zappomatic, taking down one of the Tronics that was about to attack Devin. The dog ran away shortly after, so great timing, even though Ben shocked himself as a result. <laughs> Robbie tries to use his strength to fend off Cyclotron, and despite getting the upper hand, his suit began to overheat, and this led to him attacking Zoe, and she started to lose energy. Devin came back just in time to defeat Cyclotron, Smash restrained Ravi, and they head back to Grid Battle Force to find out what's going on. While Nate was trying to piece together what happened, Devin gave Ravi and Zoe a pep talk about how they should focus more on working together, in which they listened, and judging by the way Commander Shaw was looking, I think it's obvious on who will lead the Power Rangers. And Scruzzle, who was back in the Cyber Dimension, wasn't able to get enough Morphex for Evox, but he did however use it to power one of his giant Giga Drones, which he sends to Earth's Dimension to try and get an entire Morphex Tower. Devin does his best to stop it with the help of his Racer Zord in battle mode, and just when he was about to finish it off, Devin, of all things, sees a billboard with a dog which causes him to freeze up again. And I'm thinking, what's going on? <laughs> Why does he keep freezing? Well, according to Nate, Devin has cheetah DNA in him. And cheetahs are cats, in which cats are scared of dogs. Which does make sense, but again, it's a billboard. Devin reacted as if the dog was going to jump out of it. <laughs> but of course, Nate continues by saying that the rangers were briefly in contact with the Evox virus when they became rangers, and how it corrupted their animal DNA to cause all their weaknesses. Nate gave Zoe a carrot as a test, and as expected, Zoe's energy came back and she was ready to go. 
As for Ravi, the reason why he lost control during the previous fight was because he was fighting as hard as a gorilla by using all his strength against Cyclotron to the point to where he overheated and couldn't think straight. So now in the future, when he does fight monsters, he'll be more careful. Zoe and Ravi then get in their zords with their beast bots. They save Devin, he defeats the Giga Drone, and that is one virus eliminated. And the episode ends with the Rangers getting one last briefing from Commander Shaw, and Zoe and Ravi give Devin their vote of confidence to become the leader of the Power Rangers Beast Morphers. What an episode this was. I was thinking at first things would slow down from the previous episode, but nope. This one carries on the same strong momentum, if not more, than the previous one did. This might surprise you, but my favorite part was pretty much the entire episode. From seeing Blaze and Roxy in the Cyber Dimension, to the ending where Devin became the leader. After the past 8 years, I didn't think it was possible, but we finally have a Power Rangers product that's enjoyable, has a good story, and truly is fun to watch. Everything is consistent, from the fight choreography, the character interaction, the acting, the explanations, etc. And not only are Betty and Ben good as comic relief, but the way they're being written and presented currently, they feel like important characters. They're naturally funny and don't come off as forced. Even Devin's reaction to the billboard dog, as over the top as that was, I laughed. And at the same time, I was thinking why and what's going on. But it all worked out, and it made sense. Nate is also an awesome character, being how he knows so much about the morphing grid, and how everything works. If Ziggy and Dr. K from RPM had a son, he would be it. And lastly, Kelson Henderson, who has been in various Power Rangers seasons, has returned once again as the voice for the Red Rangers Beast Bot, Cruz. Not bad. And with that being said, I'm turning it over to you guys. Did you enjoy the episode and have any favorite parts? And if you were chosen to be a Ranger at Grid Battle Force and you were able to pick your own animal DNA, which one would you choose and why? Let me know, and until next time, this is John from Mr. Winnie Productions signing out.